Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where we'll be discussing the seven steps for non-computer science graduates to land a software developer job. Software development is becoming a increasingly popular field, I think partly due to um, the perks and the high salary um, for essentially working on a computer. Um, so it's, it's a really good industry to get into. However, often the requirement is to have a computer science degree, uh, but there is alternatives, which is to alternative routes to become a software developer, which is to teach yourself. And the people who teach themselves to become software developers are called self-taught software developers. So that's the focus of today's video. I'm going to give you seven steps for non-computer science graduates, so people without computer science degrees, to land a high-paying software developer job. Me, myself, I'm self-taught, so I never went to a university for computer science. So I went through a boot camp process, and I taught uh, through the boot camp, proce uh, boot camp process, I managed to get a job and land a job as a software developer. And the whole process took me about 12 months, and I would say it's totally worth it in terms of um, the career I've had now. So I've been a software developer now for over four years, and I can say it's a very rewarding career and I highly recommend, it, highly recommend it. So let's get straight into the topic of this video. Seven steps. So the very first step for non-computer science graduates to learn a software, develop, software developer job is to build a strong foundation. This means having a strong foundation in software developer development concepts and technologies. Um, this can involve getting an understanding of data structures, um, methodologies and like core concepts. So an example of, of a data structure that you should know if you want to become a software developer is an array. And this, this would be considered foundational. By foundational, I mean that it's unlikely to change anytime soon. And you, you can kind of, you can use it across different languages. So an array, for example, is a data structure which holds like a list. And this list often you, know, you, can, you can iterate through and you can manipulate this list in various ways. Um, so essentially you should be looking for foundation when you're first beginning to learn to become a software developer or you're first learning to code, you should build foundational knowledge. And the way you build foundational knowledge is through books, contrary to pop popular belief. You don't use you know, Udemy or Coursera or Code Academy. Um, I find these court these these courses online they're too um, surface level. Um, it might be possible to I think there's a CS fifty course by Harvard University. Maybe you can get some in depth knowledge from there. Uh, but I always go with books. Um, books like let's say you will want to become a JavaScript developer. There's a good book here, JavaScript the Definitive Guide by David Flanagan. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, books like this. Um, will allow you to build a foundational knowledge that you can use across different frameworks and languages. Um, if you learn JavaScript really, really well, you can apply it to uh, other languages as well. So developing that strong foundation is the first step. The second step is to build a professional online brand. So this could be through YouTube or through a blog or uh, through any other social media uh, platform where you kind of you create content revolving around software development and what this does is it is it creates a kind of um, it, se sep it separates you apart from the other candidates for a particular job I've been part of the, I've been part of the hiring process for software developers and if I see someone who has a YouTube channel or a blog revolving around software development it really does stand out so uh, it's a great way to, to set you apart when you're applying for jobs, but also it's a great way to learn because um, by explaining things to others, often it can be a great way to learn yourself. Um, step number three is to gain relevant experience. This can be through like participating in coding challenges, hackathons, uh, contributing to open source projects, and or even building a portfolio. But the important part here is that you have relevant experience. That means whatever language or um, a niche that you're focusing on, you get experience related to that language or niche. 
if I was a React JS developer, I shouldn't be going to coding challenges and hackathons related to like Ruby on Rails because it's not really relevant. I want to stick to my niche. I want to stick to my language. And that that's, that's step number three. Step number four is you want to develop essential skills. So skills that you'll need um, like in the job, like soft skills, for example, like uh, being good, a good communicator, being a good, uh, being empathetic, or um, having problem solving skills, being adaptable, attention to detail, all this stuff that often comes quite naturally, can be learned as well. So if, if let's say you are a bad communicator, you feel you're a bad communicator, you can read a bunch of books, um, you can watch some videos about how to be a better communicator, and this is gonna help you um, first land the job, because often when you go for an interview for a job for software developer role, you'll be interviewed by, you have a technical interview from like the so another software developer or the CTO, and then you'll also be interviewed by a project manager or the CEO or some some someone in those positions, and they'll check for your your suitability to the to the to the, to the team you're they're looking to make you join, looking to look to hire for. So um, they also make you make sure you're a nice person, not a bad person. So you want to make sure that you have those kind of soft skills down. Okay. Step number five: you want to understand the job market. You want to know what the job market requires of uh, applicants or what employers want. So this often depends on the region that you live in. So for example, I live in the UK and in the UK, um, often companies, not all companies, but just from what I've seen, they want you to come to the office once or twice a week. And if you mention that you're happy with that, maybe they're more likely to you know hire you. Um, or you can look at uh, like what qualifications or experience they're looking for. Maybe they're looking for a certain certificate. If they want like an AWS certificate, go ahead, just do, do this certificate, get it done so you meet the requirements. Um, understand the job market properly before you start applying for roles and make sure you meet those requirements. Fit the avatar of the, of the, um, of the, of the candidate the employer wants to hire. Yes. Okay. Step number six, staying motivated and persisting. Um, I've helped a few other people with getting a role as a software developer and one that comes up is people just lose hope when they stop, they give up after a period of time. But the important thing is to keep persisting and to have like a daily routine you follow related to learning to code or applying for jobs or whatever it may be. So that could be you learn to code for two hours a day minimum, which is what I did for maybe a year and a half or you apply for 10 jobs every day for a year. Um, of course, these goals should be really realistic, shouldn't be unrealistic for you, uh, but they shouldn't be so, um, it shouldn't be too easy. Like you shouldn't be coding once a week, like that's unacceptable. Uh, if you're just begin a beginner, you should be coding every day. I don't care what people say, you should be coding every single day for at least at least six, seven months, at least. Um, people say you can code once a week and you know become a software developer. I don't know what jobs they're, they're, um, they're, they're getting hired for because I certainly wouldn't hire them. So yeah, uh, step number seven, landing a high paying software developer job. This is probably the most important one, important step. If you wanna land a high paying software developer job, the first one is you need to specialize, you need to specialize in a niche. Now, what do I mean by specialize? Okay, so if I say I'm a web developer, there's a lot of a lot of candidates out there who are web, web developers, and the salary for web developers isn't great. Okay, but if I say I'm a web developer who specialises in performance, that kind of sets me apart from the other web developers, and companies are much more likely to hire you for that role if they're looking for that, and they're willing to pay you a lot more as well. So ideally, you want to specialise in a niche, and I'll, I'll tell you how far you need to niche down. So the niche should be a centimeter wide and a meter deep. By that I mean there should be very few people or not many people who meet the requirements of that of that of that of that niche, but there should be lots of opportunities, there should be lots of um, lots of opportunities for you to get paid a lot of money essentially. A couple of examples of this is accessibility, so that's a big one. Uh, performance or SEO is not as, as popular nowadays, but that's one as well. So instead of being like a front-end developer, you could be a front-end developer, front-end, React.js 
developer who specializes in uh, optimizing uh, optimizing websites for performance. Or you can be a Ruby developer who optimize who specializes in um, accessibility. Or you can be a um, front end developer who specializes in CSS animations. CSS animations. Um, those all markets out there. There's markets out there, out there for those examples that I gave. Um, I think Amazon had recently had a, had a role for a front end developer uh, who specializes in accessibility, and they was paying a few hundred thousand for that. I think, if I remember correctly. So it's a big opportunity if you niche down. Um, second thing is really try to stand out when you apply for roles. Try to stand out, especially if it's a job that you want. If you want to stand out from the crowd, then you need to really stand out. Send a send a video in a video introduction or send a postcard in the mail. Do something to stand out from the crowd, um, especially if it's a role that you really want. Um, lastly, negotiate salary. If you're not if you want to be paid well, you've got to negotiate. Um, <clears throat> don't accept whatever salary they initially offer. Just don't, don't. No matter what they say, if they say, "Oh, we can only afford," blah, blah, blah. Oft, often maybe sometimes that is that is the case, but often more than not, they're just playing games with you, and. Um, you need to take consider take into consideration the average salary for your position and inflation. Take into consideration those two things will allow you to get paid a lot more than you um, than you would have been. Um, so make sure that you consider that and realize that once you join a role, it's unlikely that your salary will increase by too much. Um, maybe ten percent every year, but with inflation, that's pretty much nothing nowadays, at least. So yeah, those are the seven steps. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're interested in content like this, like about uh, advice for non-computer science graduates to land high paying software developer jobs, then go to my website, hassanarmstrong.com. I've got a link in the description. And you can sign up to a monthly newsletter where I'll give you um, some guidance, advice, tips, all about becoming a software developer and a high paying one at that. Um, I also have a book, Software engineering is a career uh, on Amazon. Uh, you can buy it for I think on Kindle a few bucks. Um, there I kind of I kind of detail my whole story from starting from knowing nothing about code to become a software developer. Um, I was originally in healthcare before, um, so if you're interested in that, do purchase the book, have a read. If you like it, let me know. Leave a five star review; it means a lot to me. And if you just want to have a chat about your journey or or you're trying to become a software developer but you're just not going anywhere. Go to my website, book in a call with me, totally free. Happy to, happy to have a 30-minute chat with you. Okay, look forward to speaking with you soon. Peace.